everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. What's up, TV Talk fans? Obviously, repping my Steel City because my Steelers won on Sunday. Looking for you, Kansas City. You're right. Uh, guys, big show today. We got all kinds of Golden Globe stuff to go over. We have a special guest. We have a guest cam. We're switching people out. It's going to be like a round robin of TV fun. Who else is here, Sinead? Also here is Sasha Pearl Raver. If you missed it, the most exciting thing to happen in my life was the introduction to the Golden Globes where they let us know my girl Barb is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good week, y'all. It's a good week. And also here, a special guest, Allison Keen. Hey, y'all. Well, yes. Thanks for having Allison. me. Allison. Yes. Allison, why don't you tell the audience uh, who you are and everything? Uh, right. Well, I am the TV editor at Collider, um, and I'm here repping the dot com, I guess, on the, the video side this time. So yeah. Love Thanks having, for having you. Me. Straight out of Atlanta. Yeah. Which yeah. was a big winner last night. <laughs> yeah, you you see that transition? I like that segue. You were thanked <laughs> by Donald Glover. Personally yeah. I was thanked. Yes. yes. Of course. Um, I had Atlanta. a lot to do with it. So yeah. it was important to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just great to be out here and um, excited to do some TV talk today. Ooh, it down, should I King. intro the Griff Cam? Yeah, I think you yeah. should. Yeah. Guys, let's check out the Griff Cam. Hey! Hey! Happening on the Griff Cam. <laughs> Damn. We're going to have, so here, how this is going to work is Sasha's going to be here for about the first half hour, then she has to take off, so we're going to switch out and put David Griffin in to Sasha's seat. Uh, but we're going to get some reactions from Griff, maybe some giggles, maybe yeah, a few smiles. It's oh, Beard yeah. Cam 2017. There he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, Oh, look at him. Just the most handsome guy in an 18th century house in Pasadena. That right there is called the Sorry Mrs. Griffin Cam. <laughs> yeah. yeah in girl. an 18th century house in Pasadena. I love it. Via satellite from his 18th century mansion in Pasadena, it's David Griffin. <laughs> He's actually on a rolling hill in Poldark. You just can't yes. see behind because yeah. it's a tight shot, so you can get all that beard up in it. Yeah. And a, a little little known fact, uh, Allison also a huge Poldark fan. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm the other Anglophile that is here now. Yeah. There are are other fans, so there maybe we need us, to stop yeah. giving David such a hard time. I know, I it's think I'm they do exist. Title. It's just pole dark. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's I, it. I'm sure the show is fantastic. I'm actually looking forward to watching it when some other things have calmed down. But uh, the, the only reason we ever made oh, fun of pole dark, no, other I'm going to watch pole dark. I what? Promise. Like, like your herpes flare up? Like, there's just such a random. No, like, I'm like, calm I'm down? knee deep. I'm knee deep in watching the hundred because David has told oh, me to watch Jesus, the hundred. Oh Jesus, you have thirty-seven thousand episodes. Thirty-seven hundred episodes to go. I have to. This can be an emotional roller coaster, by the way. <laughs> like oh you're in God, for some Plus, dark Emerald time. Emerald City just started. Emerald you. City. Oh I am oh so God. on board with Emerald City. Just like I'm on board with Walking on Glass. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to so say The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. like, same, same. Same, same. <laughs> yeah, the walking dead. Uh, okay, let's get into it. So last night was the Golden Globes. I don't know how I actually feel about these awards, other than the fact that it just looks like people are like, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, I need to get to my award. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, sorry, sorry, Ryan Reynolds, sorry. Like, the, it just seems like the most uncomfortable room to it's have an really award small. ceremony ever. It's the same ever. place they hold the streamies, if yeah. you think about it. In yeah. comparison, Hot. the streamies are held there. The actual space is Tiny. Yeah, it's absurd. And they put the TV people way in the back, and they put the mu movie people up front. Just doesn't make sense to me. But there's a lot of comedy to be had in there. Your favorite intro line, I believe, was? Well, my favorite intro line was from last year, which was like a supermodel's vagina. Let's all give a warm welcome to Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, and when go. he walked out, I was like, hey, <laughs> save that, save that. Yeah, I go. think the best intro this year was the uh, Jessica Chastain. Oh, and Eddie Redmayne? Eddie Redmayne, insane in the Redmayne. Yes. Chastain in the Redmayne. <laughs> that was fantastic. Really love that pun. Yeah. What'd you think, Allison? I was buried in screeners all night, so oh, I was just sort of boo. flipping back and forth. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we can get into the the winners and losers later, but um, I did catch the cold open, which I did love. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was great. Yeah, really, really smart. One sparkly. of the best. I mean, I think that Jimmy Fallon knew where his sweet spot was yeah. and was like, I'm going to pre record something, which is great because the teleprompter went down because Polar <laughs> and Faye did such a great monologue yeah. that he was like, I'm just not going to touch it. Yeah. yeah. And he knew it would play Stranger Things, La La Land, went hard in it. I love Game loved of Thrones. <sighs> Let's, Little John Snow. Even right now, you guys. Yeah. Okay, here's something we definitely have to talk about right off the bat. The Golden Globes are voted on by the HFPA. Mm -hmm. The HFPA is a voting body that basically is somewhere between 96 and 100 members. So let's all just keep some perspective. Like the Academy is thousands of people thousands. voting. That's for both the Emmys and the Oscars. The Golden Globes figured out a way to get people hella drunk mm -hmm. and sh have a great time at an award show and somehow they got clout out of that and good for them. Sure. But let's just keep in mind, it's like 
98 ish people yeah. voting on this. And most yeah. of them are British. Yes. For Hollywood Foreign Press. Yeah. So it's like, when you see the list of winners, you're like, this makes sense. British mm -hmm. and probably French yes. as well. And they're also, I will say, having worked in this industry for a while, the most. Uh, sycophantic so they have a lot of parties where if celebrities show up and like when the celebrities come out to pimp their material if they can you know talk to them touch them take a selfie with them chances of getting a vote is higher interesting and there are certain people who I think definitely fit into that we'll get there <laughs> okay well let's break down some uh, the winners and the losers uh, Sinead what's up first all right so starting with limited series Tom Hiddleston won for the the night manager yeah uh, okay <laughs> um, that's actually that was one of the greatest speeches speaking I mean that was the person I was sort of alluding to like somebody who like wants the attention and like wants the accolades his speech was so phenomenal because if you actually broke it down he basically was like I want to thank myself <laughs> for making a property where humanitarian workers have something to binge. Thanks, <laughs> me. <laughs> that was what he did, you guys. <laughs> it was silly at best. Uh, do you like the night manager? Did you like? I, I, I really liked it. I, well, I'm the anglophile guy. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. gonna did you like it more than the night of. Oh yeah. Did you like it more uh, than yeah. People versus O.J. Simpson? Well, it's so different because it's so glossy. Like to me, it was just, it's like a Vogue spread as a TV miniseries, right? Like yeah. it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the direction was so beautiful and the writing was good. I, it was very satisfying. Like, you know, it was just very, the, the arc was really tight for everything. But um, yeah, the fact that it sort of swept here, I thought was surprising. So you liked the fact that every camera angle was just a close up on an eyeball. You were a big fan of that. No, no, that's Mr. Robot. That's, no. And it's more of just the. <laughs> no, the night manager was like, I threw people. Let's put the camera right it here. It was just beautiful people dressed in very well tailored clothes, yeah. just sort of lounging in beautiful places. I mean, and how can was, you not love that? It was Olivia, what's her last name? Coleman? Olivia Cole. Olivia, thanks, David. Give her Cam. Give her Cam. 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 Coleman. Coleman. Uh, Olivia Coleman's audition for Q and uh, mm -hmm. Tom Hiddleston's she audition right. for James Bond. Yeah. So the, he, the, one of the things that bothered me so much, I did love that series, but that was the series that made me realize Tom Hiddleston should never be James Bond because of the way he like preened and pranced through the mm -hmm. entire thing. Like even if you watch the shots of him walking. But isn't James Bond is, sort of preening and prancing a little bit sometimes? Nah. But he, he doesn't try. James he, Bond yeah. just is. He sits <laughs> deep in his like Thanks swag Jesus. and it's, it's the smartest all good. thing I'll say on this show today. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but you're so pretty when you say it. You know why? Because she's, she's a tan. tan. She's a tan. <laughs> All right, what's next? Oh, did you want no, to No, that's it? it. There you go. What's uh, next? Sarah Paulson. The only for... winner that they really got right in TV. Yeah, the people versus OJ. Yeah. No she, contest. She, yeah, she was yeah. incredible. I think we, we said it on the Golden Remotes. We've said it on this show before. Marsha, 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 Marsha. How many Marshes? Just, just, just three. Just Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Uh, was probably the best episode of TV of the year. Yes. M next excellent. to Battle of the Bastards. Yeah. So. She's fantastic in everything she does. And, yeah. and this was also sort of an award, I think, for her sort of body of work this mm -hmm. year, too. But in this particular series, I mean, she was so outstanding. Yeah. I'm just glad that, you know. Is it, is it me or does, does uh, Sarah Paulson sort of look like Kristen Wiig with the short hair? Because they both sort of had like the short I hair. I see it. I see it. Yeah, when they walked out together yeah. or right right after each other, I definitely saw it yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I loved that bit. Oh, that bit was, so, yeah, good. was so, so good. The so commitment, funny. man, yeah. that could have gone <laughs> really awry. Yeah. I never loved saw my it. grandma again. Yeah, that was really good. All, <laughs> All right, right, what's next? Hugh Laurie won for the Night Manager. Again, I mean, fine. He's great. It's just it was a really stacked category, and so for that, you you sort of couldn't go wrong. But if you did, maybe it would be Hugh Laurie, and who I love, and who did a great job. He was so menacing and and was so great, but at the same time, yeah, there were. Just there were so many great, you know. Who would you have given it to if you could have given it away? Was that the one that Sterling K. Brown was? Yes. It? Yeah, I, it's it's probably going to be him. Sterling I mean, K. he Brown was just uh, so no. He was, it was Courtney B. Vance, I think, in that one, and Sterling was for uh, supporting. Right, actor. right. Ah, you got so yeah. Is, I no, you, so that's yeah, right. Hugh Laurie it's won for supporting. Supporting. Sorry. So Sterling K. Brown. Sorry, my bad. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sterling K. I know Miss Sterling's. Yeah. Okay. I love him. The thing is, is I felt bad for a second because I feel like with This Is Us and with The People versus OJ, Sterling K. Brown was like the greatest discovery of last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I almost don't feel bad because he and did he won win. The he well, he won yeah. the Golden Remote. He the most won important an Emmy. award. Yeah. And I feel like it's okay if the ninety whatever people at the Golden Globes didn't give it to him because I think the rest the of other Hollywood nine million did. have really embraced him and yeah. everyone like the fact that we know Sterling K. Brown. Like right. not Sterling Brown, Sterling K. Brown. Sterling yeah. K. Brown, he's so phenomenal. He's got I great love eyeballs, him. doesn't he? Whenever he does his like Yeah. And I didn't yeah, realize he's slightly <laughs> confused though. I yeah. will say that. Yeah. I didn't realize his wife was on This Is Us also. She's the his wife wife in real life, his, his wife in the show. 
Uh, not his wife on the show. It's the woman who told Mandy Moore, Mandy Moore, who wins hands down for most smoking smoke show. She looked she's so oh, yeah. amazing yeah, last night. And how about how they kept thanking Mandy Moore, the choreographer? Yeah. And I was like, I she choreographed you as a choreographer in La with This Is Us. And, and there Amanda like was like, so many no. news articles that were like, just so you know, <laughs> yeah. it is a different Mandy yeah. Moore. When did she used to be on the, So You Think You Can Dance? I was like, Mandy Moore? This yeah. is what yeah. she's doing now. And then I realized. So many yeah. Mandy Moore facts that but, were. It's like Chuck Norris. Yeah. Like, Mandy yeah. Moore's done so many things. Yeah. I didn't know. No, but she's the one who at the swimming pool Mandy Moore comes up to and she's like, you need to. Oh, she's the uh, other, uh, the mom uh, of the friends. She's the black that, okay. mom who sort of is teaching them how to be a better parent to a black child. Like that's that. Jolene okay. K. Brown's that's right, awesome. wife in real life. Oh, that's nice. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then we have in the last in the limit series. Yeah, so Olivia Coleman wins for the Nightman. Yeah. She is fantastic. I'm yeah. happy her. with that. She's yeah. Great in Broadchurch. Love Broadchurch. She was she was my favorite part of the series of the night manager, she was my favorite part. She was great. Yeah. And that speech that she gives, um, I'll, I'll dance around spoilers. It's not a real spoiler alert. But when she talks about why she hates Hugh Laurie's character so yeah. much. Yeah. And it was so emotional. And just in that moment, like, she just owned it. Mm -hmm. And to okay. me, that would, like, completely justify that okay. win right there. Yeah. And she did the entire thing, like, seven months pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Like a it's baller. Yeah. yeah. Good for her. Heck, yeah. Like, uh, well, what's that girl's name, the the, the um, Malaysian rapper that, like, came on stage rapping, like, eight months pregnant? Uh, that would be M.I.A. M.I.A. Yes. Awesome. Or is she Indonesian? She's I think she's Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan. Nailed it. Nicely done. All right. And then uh, next award, Sinead. Um, so the uh, limited series went to The People versus OJ. Yeah, which Not makes surprising. absolutely no sense. If they're going to give everything to the night manager, then they're like, but the series wasn't good. <laughs> we like, love the We OJ. really know that it's People versus yes. OJ that was the best, but... We'll save it for that yeah. one award. Because, I mean, that would have been my vote, 100%. Uh, again, though, I got I to gotta talk about the fashion a little bit. First of all, John Travolta with the snap-on wig that he then loaned to Sylvester Stallone <laughs> was really bugging me. And the horrible, iridescent, pinstripe tuxedo. For who? John Travolta. Oh, man. I, I, once Travolta goes on screen, I kind of just, like, zone out. After watching the Leah Remini I was just going to say, oh, Leah Remini best. has forever changed my Everything. outlook on John Travolta. Like, every single time he's on screen, I'm just like... What is Leah Remini thinking? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause you realize he's an alien. Do. Stallone's strap on plugs were a root tail. Oh my God. It was so crazy. Just shave the head, bro. Why like, would you do that? You're John freaking Rambo. You shouldn't have to relegate yourself to plugs. Oh, yeah. was, I mean, Hugh stage. Laurie, he's got a real, real cute bald spot happening right here, but oh, he just it's embraces growing. it. It's he's going for it. Head, but he has the greatest comb over. Like, the artist that puts together his comb over for Night Manager deserves an Emmy, a Golden yeah. Globe. It's like all perfectly sculpted, like hair by hair. I know. <laughs> was it Mandy Moore that did it? Do we know? It was, Mandy was it Mandy Moore? That's who did it. It was yeah. Mandy Moore. It was Mandy Moore. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. So talented. <laughs> okay, what's next, Sinead? <laughs> All right, so moving on to drama. Claire Foy. Let's get won. to the Griff Cam. Get to the Griff Cam. <laughs> Griff, Griff Cam. Cam. Oh! The yeah. crowd really coming through last night. I know. Yeah. Well, it's excellent. I mean, it's and Claire Foy is just incredible. No? Is there wrath okay, coming from? Okay, well, here's from the thing. <laughs> Sasha has never seen The Crown. Because I'm just so disinterested, and everybody who I've talked to is like, it's okay. But, like, it's the definition of white people problems. Oh, she has to be queen and figure out how to be queen. I don't care. I don't but care. But that's, like, real. You understand that? I don't care. <laughs> right. You know what? There you are real white people happens. problems happening over You know what's boring? <laughs> real life. You know what can only be done sometimes in really great ways, like the people versus O.J. Simpson? Real life. I just don't care. And I know at some point I'm going to have to watch it. I'll get around to it. Don't tweet it's at me. It's very low-key. Like, the, the problems that it, pissed. I mean, right. she's yeah. the queen, and these are huge problems. But it also, like, it finds the really human moments, you know, like the really small things. And so in that way, like, it's 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 just a really beautiful she show. Puts it's on a gorgeously great done. She really and does. She, she nails that accent, awesome. too, which is amazing. But isn't yeah. she British? But well, it's that special, oh, like, okay. Queen Elizabeth it's that Queen's English. English thing. Yeah, the Queen's English. And, I'll, and I will rep Wolf Hall, which I know that David has talked about in the past, and Claire Foy is amazing in that as Anne Boleyn. So she's just nailing it with the Queens okay. right now. I just know that the Golden Globes love giving newcomers, first-timers. Totally. Like, Definitely. you know, they gave Gina Rodriguez at the first year out. They gave uh, Car Carrie Russell at, when What's she was on Felicity. What's the girl Felicity. that you love um, from Girls? Um, Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham. Yeah, like her. they love doing that kind of stuff. And I think in this case, this was another like, oh, fresh face, give it to her. Whether or not she actually deserved it. She does. TBD. I think she, <laughs> she, was, she was definitely, she was the reason I kept turning back into that show because yeah. I loved her as Queen Elizabeth. I really did. Mm. Uh, next award, speaking of newcomer, but in TV, not in the world. Yeah. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton yeah. wins for Goliath. I was, was so awesome. excited to see that because yeah. that show was fantastic. The show was awesome. He was awesome. He was and awesome. the speech he gave at the, th at, uh, at the Golden Globes was one of the better speeches. 
that night. He talked about how like people sacrifice like PAs and people behind the oh, scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. don't get their due. Yeah. And you know, like a lot of people suffer and go the, the actual making of a TV show is is more than just the actors and the people in front of the yeah. camera. Yeah, he's repping names. some below the line talent. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And yeah. I thought and, and Billy Bob Thornton, I, I think without that show, because when when I first turned on Glass, and I said it on here, when I first started watching Glass, I was like, ah crap, this is gonna be another Californication, right? It's just like a drunk playboy that's getting his way. But it really turned into something totally different. I, and I loved Glass. And I thought, and I'm glad he won. I thought he deserved it. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's next? Donald Glover coming in, winning um, for I mean, Comedy Atlanta. First of all, let's talk about the dude's suit because oh I was God, so I can't, jealous. I can't. I can't. Was it velvet? I said doo doo brown. <laughs> I said doo doo brown. He wore a caca brown velvet, <laughs> velvet suit with an oversized bow tie, making me it's want right to. Yeah. Oh, I love you so, so much, good. Donald Glover. I love you so much. That suit was cat. That in it, all versions. That's his audition for Black Willy Wonka. I mean, oh, that suit oh my God. is incredible. Look at wow. that. Wow. It was it's hideous, incredible. and the bow tie doesn't really match. Like the bow tie a little more aubergine yeah. than the caca brown. It was literally the color that, like, if you give your baby too much pineapple juice, it poops out. Yeah. And he... <laughs> <laughs> David... Allison, welcome to TV. Yeah. Tell yeah. Girl, what's up? David Griffin on the couch just went, ooh. ooh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, no, I, I thought, you know, Donald Glover's speeches were relatively decent. Like, he mumbles a lot. But when he called out the city of Atlanta and he yeah, was like, was thank awesome. you to the people and the weirdness that happens in that city, it, it that... Because that show, and you, I mean, you talk that's about it thing. all yeah, season. Yeah, like it, we're, I mean, any show that's sort of brave enough to call itself the name of a city, right? It's sort of, you have your hackles up if you're from that city. Like, okay, let's see what he's going to do. And he really nailed it. I mean, it's, it's a very specific journey as far as Atlanta goes. Atlanta's such a diverse town in so many different ways. But he just, it's like in the atmosphere and the tone of the show, he just nails it. And I mean, everyone that I know watches it in Atlanta, everybody loves it. Like, he's just done an amazing job. And it's that's so cool. weird and unique. And yeah. Totally. Yeah. And also, how many plays how many plays do you think Migos got last night oh like through God. the yeah. yeah Migos shout out was yeah awesome. that Migos shout out was amazing okay we're coming on down here uh Sinead, what's next Tracy Ellis Ross won for Blackish oh, yes. made me so happy first of all I loved her speech because she was yeah. like yo this is my first time here which was is so cool and I think on the flip side of that when Emma Stone said I've been in LA 13 years I know there's a bunch of actresses like what the fuck 13 years <laughs> Like she's uh, Emma Stone is a flash in the, is 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 the exception to the rule of you got to struggle and struggle and struggle and do whatever it takes to kind of make it. She just like hey you you're beautiful and you're really talented. You want to be in this movie and she got it. And there's a lot of actresses that don't have that. And then there's on the other flip side of the thing, Tracy Ellis Ross, who comes from Hollywood royalty, right. who has struggled yeah. her entire career and gotten this amazing role and is finally getting some recognition for it. Now don't get me wrong, I think that uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus is a vision, phenomenal as yeah. Selena Meyer in Veep, but. Tracy Ellis Ross is incredible in black. Well, I'm happy for any show that features a woman with curly hair, yeah. frankly. So, uh, yeah, I said, but you know, Blackish is a show that I was really into, and then it's sort of I haven't kept up with it because there's just so much TV and there's so much to keep up with. But she is consistently so good on yeah. that show. So I'm glad that she's finally getting the recognition she deserves. I used to come home from work, and it would be late at night. I didn't have cable at the time, so I would turn on my TV to like wind down. And I would be hanging with my girlfriend. <laughs> so now, I, like, she has been in my heart and soul for so long. And I'm just so happy to see yeah. her getting recognition because I think she's phenomenal. And also, Kenya Barris writes such great material for her. Mm -hmm. And for everybody on that show, I just, I loved it. I was thrilled to see her win. I loved her speech. 100%. Yeah, it was just, it was wonderful. And she is not a product of nepotism, no. which is so rare. Her yeah. mom, by the way, you guys, if you don't know, is <laughs> Diana Ross. <laughs> FYI. FYI. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> if you didn't recognize uh, the hair. Yeah. Her cousin Rick Ross, hell of a guy. Uh, okay, we got our final two here, the big ones of the evening. Sinead? Comedy series went to Atlanta. Well deserved. Well deserved yeah. What else are you going to give it to? No, right. And fine. drama series went to The Crown. Yeah, what, look at, go to the Griff Cam, there it is. Oh, man. I don't know. It's not better than Game of Thrones. I, you I, guys, these are, these are two of my favorite shows of the year. To be yeah. honest, like you know, I mean, I mean, top five. Like they, they were both really solid, and I think came in with a very specific goal and then achieved it. You know, yeah. like they were just, they were very unique, and and I think, you know, yeah, were very successful in what they wanted to do. I know you didn't watch The Crown. I, I personally <laughs> don't think that it deserved to win Best Drama Series, but it, it wasn't like I was disappointed that it won. 
I think Game of Thrones should win because it's like it's a spectacle, and not only is it a spectacle, it's like Braveheart, right? Braveheart is an incredible movie with incredible fight scenes. I think Game of Thrones is the same way. What they're able to pull off in The Crown is very, very different than what they're able to pull off with Game of Thrones. So I don't think they're in the same category. I honestly feel like they should have put The Crown in like musical or comedy or limited <laughs> series and just been like, Game of Thrones wins. I just, I, I mean, what we started this talking about is how the HFPA is under 100 members, you don't want to give it to This Is Us, one of my favorite shows of the year. Okay, that's fine. You don't want to give it to Stranger Things. Stranger Things, which hit the zeitgeist in a way that very few things have and will. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give it to Game of Threesies, which had the best season in a show that is legendary, that will live on and possibly never be matched. You give it to the show that is watched by some people, kind of forgotten by others. Are we going to talk about The Crown in four years? No. Are we going to still be talking about Stranger Things? Probably. Are we going to talk about Game of Thrones? Hell yeah! I'm pissed. Suck it. Suck it. <laughs> it was just like one of those 100%. <laughs> <laughs> look at, look at perfect reaction. <laughs> Griffin, no, perfect he was not happy. Yeah, that was a perfect cut, Cody. That Way to just, go. There's just no, there's no, it's unconscionable. You can't, you can't compare them. You can't compare them. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, there's just I'm with no you. business. And that's when you go, award shows are BS, and it's just about like marketing and how much money somebody's willing to throw at a campaign. I'm just waiting until you watch The Crown and you come back and you're like, this was the best show. Okay, I tell you what, of Allison, the year. I'm gonna watch, I will start watching it okay. when my anger recedes tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> or I will watch it after The Bachelor when I'm in a really good mood tonight. I will yeah. start tonight or there tomorrow and I will let you guys know. And okay. I will watch the Josh Makuga three episodes. Uh, three episodes. Three and if episodes I love test. it, I will go all the way. That's and I will policy. truly yeah. try to be open minded, but there is no way it's as good as Game of Thrones, I can yeah. already tell you right now. Well, here's the thing. My, my, my test, and Allison, is that I, I think that if you if you are on the fence about a show, watch three episodes. I agree. If yeah. you watch the pilot and you and you want to burn your house down like a, a pilot we're going to talk about today, <laughs> uh, then then don't give it the three-episode test because I don't... It's <laughs> it's spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, show it was like a subliminal show spoiler, spoiler alert. <laughs> Cody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cody is winning yeah, the Golden yeah. Globe today for engineering. I mean, yeah, the guy's on fire with the, griff, with the griff cam and everything. Um, truly. No, I, I I think with the crown you'll be kind of sucked in because I know I was and I, I mean I've been I'm a self admitter that I do really like deliberately paced television I like slow stuff so that's why I really love the crown but I also love British history but I think it's more than that I think you'll really like the crown but to your argument you cannot compare this to Game of Thrones I mean you can't. oh my god it's it does just, have some good relationship drama though I think you'll be surprised yeah. I think you will. I think you'll, I, honestly, I think you will. Battle of the Bastards, you guys. Okay, <laughs> that was our Golden Globe coverage. Let, let us know what you guys think. Uh, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. And uh, you guys tweeted at me all night last night, which was a lot of fun. So thank you. Let's move on. Sinead, what is next? Kirsten Dunst, fresh off of her incredible performance in Fargo season two, has signed on to a dark comedy for AMC called On Becoming a God in Central Florida. Produced by George Clooney, Smokehouse Pictures, and helmed by the lobster director, Yorgos Lanthimos. The story centers on Dunst in the early 90s, climbing the ladder of a well-known pyramid scheme company called Founders American Merchandise. Sasha, is Amway finally getting that series we've been asking for? <laughs> well, first of all, pronunciations. Oh my God, she's so crushing, crushing, crushing it, crushing it. Disgusting. She is a shipping billionaire from Greek. I didn't know oh, you're from, from Greek. See? From Greek. She right? can't even say the country. <laughs> That's how great you are. That's how uh, good she made the is, you guys. Uh, I mean, everything about the pedigree of this show gets me excited, but also a completely random subplot that gets me excited is the John Oliver pyramid scheme episode, which uh, was like the second to the last one of this season. So good. That got me. John Oliver was so brilliant this last season. He's always brilliant, but I really like the deep dive this year was just beyond beyond. So with that knowledge, what going was the into line? This, what did she call it? Like uh, it, it's a uh, a business model meant to funnel towards the top. Like, <laughs> that's a pyramid scheme. Uh, it's pretty much a pyramid scheme. But I think that this sounds great, and I loved Kirsten Dunst on Fargo. She, she was, was incredible. Yeah, and she it was sort of a comeback for her too, because totally. I feel like she sort of had gone off the radar. Mm -hmm. She comes back in and like had gained weight right for the role to like be this like. Midwestern housewife, whatever, and just killed it. Like she yeah. was incredible. And yeah. I think it just put her back on everyone's radar. And this reminds me a lot actually of her character in Fargo in a yeah. way, right? Because she's For sort sure. of like trying to like struggle and find her way. And, and well, it sounds like 
I mean, only the very brief stuff I read online, it kind of sounds like she gets involved in the pyramid scheme, they take all of her money, and right. then it becomes a revenge thing where she either takes over that pyramid scheme or does something else. And I'm not sure if she's going after the corporation or if she's just trying to like become sort of a, is it like Breaking Bad, like but with selling a, yeah. cosmetics? Yeah, yeah. I think or it's, something? Yeah. it's sort of like being, you, you get addicted to heroin, you get off and you start selling it because you sure. realize that you can make money off of it. Yeah. I think it's sort of like, like a, if you were to lose all your money on QVC because you mm. bought a whole bunch of squatty potties and you're like, listen, I can make a squatty potty and make a billion. That's where they're going. Can we talk about this image too? My best friend is squatty potty and he loves it. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> but I mean, look at that. Like, it's just... <laughs> That's that's it looks Florida. Like bring it on. That's just Florida. This, yeah. yeah. The, my bring it on Kirsten Dunst is back. Yeah. No, that's an awesome image. And AMC, uh, for for all its hits and misses, their hits are incredible. They their are. misses yeah. can like Low Winter Sun, which I watched, but nobody oh, else wow. did. Wow. Uh, yeah. Little. I watched a little. That little. was enough. Yeah. That was enough. Um, I think this is going to be pretty awesome. I also, uh, I, love I love the title, On Becoming a God in Central Florida. Yeah. It's a good title. It's evocative. What do they call that part of Central Florida when you have to drive across it? Like the... The Panhandle? The, no, no, no. No, like the, the, gator. the turn... No, no, it's like the... Gator Alley? Gator Alley? I'm not sure. Oh. No, are you talking about the actual thing? The Everglades? Yeah, that you drive over? Yeah. The Florida... Oh, the Everglades. No, right? I know. No, it's the act. No. no, it's the actual. You're thinking of the actual like road structure. It has a name. Yes. Isn't it called the Florida Turnpike? It is. Yeah. Isn't that mm. what you're thinking it's of? Like, no, so. it's got like a name. Anyway, I'm an idiot. If you are out there and you know Florida, I'm road. Like, it's is a the word road. You're looking for it's road? a road. I was looking for the word road. Florida road. 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 Okay. Uh, what's next, Sinead? We had a few trailers drop on the general public this week, but three of them stood out to us. NBC's Powerless, Netflix's Frontier, and the Hulu original The Handmaid's Tale. Allison, which of the trailers struck you as the most interesting new series? I am very excited for Handmaid's Tale. I think that, you know, I mean, the book is amazing, and it's such a great cast, and I trust Hulu to tell the story, you know, in the way it needs to be told, but um, they were all interesting in their own way. I mean, Frontier seems like another very, like, violent, twisted, interesting series that has a different perspective than we've seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and then Powerless was strange because it seemed very much just like a straight up NBC sitcom. And I'm like, I'm not sure quite how this is. It didn't feel marvel -y or superhero -y at all. And I'm not sure quite how that's gonna play, but. Well, it, I, I love the idea of Powerless because I've been talking about this for like 10 years as a fun idea. Uh, and they're finally kind of doing it. And I, like, I love that it sort of looks like a mix between like pushing daisies and community. That NBC, would be amazing, right? You know, because I, I love Push <laughs> Daisy, I love Community, but it has that like single cam kind of comedy. I love Danny Putty and uh, you know Vanessa Hudgens, our own Vanessa Hudgens over here, who was cast last week in the TV talk, the movie. Um, I think I think it looks fun. Frontier basically, I think to me, looks like Revenant, but with a series and Ad Momoa and Leonardo DiCaprio's role. The one to me is Handmaid's Tale. You said you read the book. Like this a looks like a ago, dystopian yeah. kind of mm -hmm. future where yeah, it's you're gonna quiz me now on the plot, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, back in school. So, yeah, I mean, basically, it, it's interesting because I think a lot of people have been talking about how it feels a little parallel to some fears that people have had about political stuff as far as, like, yeah, this dystopian future that's sort of coming down and these women being oppressed. And But you have Elizabeth Moss, who is amazing, mm -hmm. and everything she does is going to be awesome. And um, you have, and also the little flash of Anne Dowd, who's always, like, I don't know if you guys, you know, she's the one from The Leftovers and like yeah. some of the other shows. Who that I'm just, every single thing about that looks amazing and um, creepy and very creepy and very, yeah. And, and I'm sort of over dark dramas right now. I'm just sort of burned out on the dystopian stuff. But this one is, I think, going to be worth so a shot. Oh, well, I have a question for Allison. How do you feel about the Hulu model of releasing? I don't like it. Right. <laughs> they, I don't think that they have enough cachet to bring people back week to week. I forget about their shows in the meantime. Yeah. And you know, some of them, even if I really like them, I just forget like week to week, I just, you know, or people are gonna wait. And it's, they at least with Netflix, they drop everything and it does sort of have a, a really short half-life, right? Like people are talking about it for a little while and then um, it sort of drops out of the conversation after a week or two, depending, not Stranger Things, obviously that's been, you know, a huge hit, but you know, I think Hulu's not really capitalizing on the fact that, yeah, they can drop all of them at once, and that's what people want. And yeah. I don't really understand the reasoning behind that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for a streaming service. I think that it is yeah. counterintuitive, and I think it works against them, for sure. Um, I think Handmaid's Tale looks great. I love Elizabeth Moss. She's such an odd and interesting actress, and I can't wait for that. 
I am still 1,000% not sold on Powerless. The more I see of it, the less I am mm, interested. Man. Does I, it feel superhero -y to you at all? Like it, it feels, doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't feel superhero -y to me, but also I don't find anything about the characters that they are trying to push compelling. So I'm like, well, so you're not really giving me superheroes. You're not really giving me people that I care about in this thing. I just, I don't know why I would care. Like it's pretty looking, but so is The Good Place. And I couldn't really dive into The Good Place. Yeah, like The Good Place lost good place, me pretty yeah. quickly. And as far as Frontier goes, we were so excited last week talking yeah. about Frontier. Um, way too much clothing, you guys. Mo is wearing <laughs> way too much clothing. For a fur trader or whatever. I mean, give me a loincloth, damn it. What? Come on, Khal Drogo. You don't work that hard to be Aquaman and then cover it up. That's just, I, <laughs> why would you do that? That's Maybe like, it's just a tease. Like the, the subsequent trailers will be like fewer and fewer clothes. Oh, on the please. List, you know? I hope so, Allison. <laughs> uh, but of them, I think Handmaiden still looks the most interesting, but I am concerned because of Hulu. Because like the path, which which Sinead was obsessed with. True, true. I, really, I liked it. Like, I forgot. I forgot, like mm -hmm. you said. That in 11-22-63, which yeah. was really good. But again, it's like, you know, I, I watched quite a few episodes to review it, and then I would just forget to catch back up. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, and then know. Chance was bad. So, yeah. Okay, but that's that's not true for me, because, like, if I but love I it like so much. But I like Shut Eye. I watched all of Shut Eye. Yeah. But, but do I you wait till they all existed, too? I like no, I, I, you do I remember week. Path was on Wednesdays, and it was like, I looked forward to Wednesday nights. I just treated it like a regular TV show. He is so cute. Yeah, that is the best. I, I, no, I'm with you because there are shows. Like, I, but I'm with you too. Like, yeah. it's somewhere in the middle there. If people that are the super fans that want that show, they know when it comes out. But I always forgot. Like, which night did the path come out? Crap. But on Netflix, I'm like, I know my show's always there. Yeah. Do you know I what I want? Here's here's a million dollar idea for somebody that can do this. Is an app that has all of my shows on all the streaming oh. platforms and what I'm watching and like reminds me what I haven't watched yet, and then I can click on it and it will just take me to that platform. And also, it will pick up where free. you left the episode. Yes. Yes. Like you left it 15 minutes and 38 seconds. Guaranteed. Just, yeah. It's in pro in like the process, and oh. we just lost a billion dollars. I need yeah. him. I, well, I have no tech skills, so yeah, that's okay. This is like when like I watch Shark Tank and I just feel like an idiot. Like, Damn. Dumb. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, let's do a pilot review of Emerald City real quick. It was terrible. All right, moving on. We have uh, <laughs> The Bachelor going on. Wait, did you guys want to talk about Emerald City? Because I really <laughs> Okay, there are two things I want to say about Emerald City. Number one, you at ABC thought it was a... NBC. Oh, NBC. Sorry, NBC. Thought it was a good idea to kill the one black character with a police car straight off the bat? You thought that was a good idea? Okay, <laughs> his choices, whatever. It is such a missed opportunity. It's dumb. It could have been so cool. I felt like when I went to see Pan, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, sweet, a retelling of Peter Pan. Oh. It's oh. very much in the style of Tarsum Singh. Is yeah, Tarsum yeah. Singh. If yeah. you're a fan of his, like, it's all for you. But if not, I mean, I watched, to review it for the site, I, I watched like eight episodes or something. I watched a few and I'm then sorry. skipped to the end. Because so... I kept saying, like, is it going to, like, something's going to click, something's going to unlock, something's going to, you know. And I just, I watched all of it and I just thought, I still don't know what I saw. Yeah. Like I still, but so I think if you're a fan of his, like you get it. But if you're not so sure, it's, it's not for everybody. I, imagine, certain, imagine yeah. you had, a, okay, this is how I would kind of compare it. Imagine you had a lot of money for a student film and you also did a lot of drugs and you liked <laughs> Wizard of Oz. This would be your movie. You'd be like, dude, f let's, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> this is crazy. We're gonna paint the road yellow. Like there's not gonna be really, like bricks so much, it's just like cobblestones. What do you guys think? Do it! Yeah! And then when they land in in Oz, there's like a bunch of like Indian looking people in the snow. But they're actually all white. Yeah, like they're all white. It's just all Vikings. the tribal it's people are white. It's Vikings. Vikings. And then they're like, hey, wait, real quick, do we have any budget for beards for D'Onofrio? No? Cool. Just let's, let's spray his face with uh oh, with yeah. like uh, snow you put on your Christmas tree. Cool, cool. Oh. That show, it's like I'm the the trailer looked awesome. The show was brutally bad uh and uh i apologize to dorothy i apologize to anybody that liked the original wizard of oz i apologize <laughs> to all the people even the even the the munchkin that hung himself in the background i apologize Aww. to you because wow. the entire wow. this show there. is a travesty it's... i would rather watch wizard of oz 2 or the wiz what what the wiz is fantastic i know no no i'm saying any of those any of those over this i would watch them all in a row while somebody fed me black licorice, because I hate Ew, black, licorice. black licorice. The HBO yeah. drama Oz. Oz. Watch it. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll go to the store Oz in Hollywood a day after day rather than watch this show. I'm sorry, NBC. You've been crushing it lately. You blew it on That's this one. That's bad. It's bad. Okay. You guys ready? I'm so Hell ready. Yeah. All right, David Griffin, come on up Yay! here. Get on up. Griffin right. Cam. Griffin Cam. <laughs> the Griffin Cam has moved to the live show. Come hang here out with me. Here we go. Me. Um, so, David. So many things I wanted to say. 
Uh, well, <laughs> he was silent. <laughs> okay, but here brought we back go. for the Bachelor, which is here, David's favorite thing. Time. Why don't you guys share a mic here? Okay, so here's what happened. We all drafted uh, fantasy draft style. Allison was David's consultant. Mm -hmm. So uh, episode two of The Bachelor is tonight. David begrudgingly is watching it sparingly. I think. Are you enjoying it, David Griffin? It was a little bit. Dude, it was a little bit much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's fair, really awkward. It? You have to, mm, excuse me. You just have to like, you know, you have to talk to people. It's just weird. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird you have to talk to people? David Griffin, insight king, insight king. He's been on the couch too long. Okay, let's go over our things and we got to get some more TV talk to go to. Sasha picked Vanessa and Raven. Strong. Now here's how this works. If one of these people wins, that person gets lunch. If nobody wins, we all just get to go out to lunch together. And split the check four ways. Okay. <laughs> Sinead gets Danielle M and Astrid. I went with Danielle L because I liked her dress on the first night. I'm a you shallow liked her, human You being. liked her putting it on the glass <laughs> on the first she, night. She put it on the glass. And Whitney, because I think she looks a little like Nina Dobrev. Uh, she does. David yeah, she does. went with Rachel, who will be the first black first bachelorette. First black yeah. bachelorette. I called it the minute she showed up. She's black Andy Dorfman. And, and David mm. went Corinne because he likes those saucy blondes. Corinne is out of her mind. Is that what I like? <laughs> you like me. I do, I do. So we will, uh, we all will break down our picks, whoever's in and out next week. Uh, Sasha, thanks so much for being here. We love you so much. This was amazing. I will watch The Crown, but not before I watch The Bachelor. Uh, Peace out. See you, Sasha. Bye, Thank girl. you. Bye, guys. At Sasha Pearl Raver on Twitter and Instagram. FX Movie Download. Oh, what movie are we doing this week? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> David Griffin, welcome back, my friend. Oh. Off the Griff cam, onto the main table. I apologize about that uh, explanation for my reaction to how I enjoyed the, the batch. I, I, my brain literally just froze. I just, for some reason, got off the couch, and I think I was just a casual chill mode over there, and now I'm... I gotta actually. Yeah, uh, actually I gotta talk. be on right now. Yeah, the mic's not in the right place. Well, let's let's kick it off hot here with David Griffin. Let's talk <laughs> no. superhero rundown. Let's Schneid. go. Let's start slow, please. What's first here <laughs> in the superhero rundown? At the CW's TCA presentation, Arrow producer and writer Mark Guggenheim told the audience that we could expect some dark days ahead for Felicity, with a possible team up with some unexpected new allies who may be of the unsavory variety. Josh, what would you like to see from Felicity in the second half of the season? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, the entire internet either loves or hates Olicity. And I think this season. Accurate. Yeah. yeah <laughs> accurate. Uh, I think this season has been a nice respite from that whole thing because it's been, you know, it's been back to Arrow seasons one and two. I would love to see Felicity start, you know, her boyfriend gets, uh, spoiler, whoops, a daisy, we should throw that up there. Anybody not cut up with Arrow? All right, well, <laughs> now that her boyfriend is no longer with the show. <laughs> Uh, I think she's gonna go. I think she's gonna go crazy, and I and I want to see. I want to see her go a little, go a little nuts. They've been teasing sort of the Haven Rock fallout for yeah. a while, and I think that finally this is sort of gonna push her over the edge. And it's been weird too because they've been playing Felicity <clears throat> and Oliver as just sort of like casual friends this season, mm -hmm. which is very strange given everything that we've seen, you know, in the last um, few seasons. So I think that yeah, she's she's been teetering for a while, and we're gonna. Okay. It has been a really dark season I know, too. It's been awesome. So it's been yeah, awesome. I love it. David. Guggenheim did say uh, in that article uh, about not going too dark. Yeah, saying she's not going to go above and beyond what you think she's capable of. She's going to be pushed. It's going to be a darker story for her. But I don't think she's going to do anything too crazy. Not going to turn into the Joker or something like that. As long you know. as it's better than the wheelchair. <clears throat> Uh, Storyline. Well, you, you know, so I think she just the, suddenly. I think the reason why they switched over to trying to change their uh, approach to her in the story because it's getting too much about the relationships. Yeah. You know, I've always yeah. I love the hundred. I love I love Supernatural at least for the first five or six seasons. And those shows, especially Supernatural, it was all about the brothers. Yeah. It was about their camaraderie and their you know experiences together. Girls would come and go, but it was never the focus was never like about love triangles and the kind of that soap opera feel. And I feel like Arrow's getting back to basics again. I mean, yeah, I mean, it be, is the CW. It is the CW. It's true. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. mean, but the whole Team Arrow thing, you know, they have a really special relationship, and this season's kind of blown that apart, right? And they're sort of bringing in some new people, and it's it's been interesting. But um, yeah, I I think. Felicity has hopefully some interesting things ahead that are handled better than some of her storylines. Agreed. In I think that I think a, a lot of this Felicity storylines on this show, especially seasons three and four, were just there to create like a CW yeah. kind of thingy. And I think Felicity is awesome. I love her. I think she's funny. I think she's super sweet, and she's super talented on the show. And I think she's a really good actress. 
So the fact that they've kind of like wasted her is like last season when they were basically, she was like, I can't believe you would lie to me about having a kid. Well, they were going to kill the kid. So you can't be that pissed off. Like that was the dumbest. It was. Yeah. That was such a stupid storyline. So I hope they do in this second half, give her something that's pretty badass. Uh, what's next? Shinasty. Well, it appears that that musical crossover episode of The Flash and Supergirl is definitely happening. It will start on Supergirl and conclude on The Flash. And according to executive producer Andrew Kreisberg, it will be a pivotal episode for both of the shows. It was also confirmed that Music Meister will be the key villain in the episodes. Allison, what are your thoughts on the musical crossover? I am so excited. What? I am so excited. Let me tell you why. Go. The Flash Supergirl uh, crossovers in the past are super cute. They're both really light, fun shows, but I think that from what I actually spoke to Andrew Kreisberg after the panel, and we were talking a little bit about this, and he was saying, like, you know, the point is they want to make it organic to the story, right? Like, mm -hmm. they want it to be something that makes sense for Flash and for Supergirl. It's not just going to be, like, a random two episodes mm -hmm. that don't connect in any way. So it's a smart way to do it. Um, and, like, you know, Melissa and Grant have so much charisma, and they're so talented, and I think it's going to be a really... It's going to be fun for the fans, too. It's going to be, like, the Earth 2 episodes where we get to see our favorite characters doing something unexpected. Um, so, yeah, I am I am super stoked. David? <laughs> um, <laughs> Jess, I know you're not, the, not the biggest yeah. musical uh, fan in the world. And I'm not a fan of musicals, I will oh. say. Yeah, I am not a fan of musicals, but I am down for this. Interesting. And after okay. seeing La La Land, I'm, I'm ready for some more music uh, in my life. So I'm excited because, you know, I have an idea of how they could do this. And Ooh, go Griff. They, you know, they have all these alternate I could have pitched this yesterday, so you should have told me yeah, this before. Should, yeah, they, they have alternate <laughs> earths, right? Yeah. Let's say they go to an earth where people break into song. It's like it's like a Disney, you know. It's like uh, what's the movie Enchanted or something. Yeah. You know, the people start breaking into song. It's like a Disney movie. I think it it's could gonna work. Be, it's going to be connected to the villain, right? Like, well, it's yeah. Be well, the music master is going to yeah, he's going to control them somehow. But that would be cool if they. It's, I think it's going to be good, Josh. Josh, yeah. come on, get into it. Uh, okay, all right. It's cute and I, fun. Yeah, it's cute and fun. <laughs> and we like these people sing like for real. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Grant yeah. was so in Glee, right? Yeah, and Melissa too. Yeah, so you know that. And Joe was in Rent, right? Isn't um, it like the first production of Rent? Yeah, they said that, yeah. that the other... He's been in a bunch of stuff. Because yeah. he had that nightclub scene and the alternate yeah. when he was singing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Jesse Elmer is mm -hmm. great. Okay, so you listen. know, at least it's, gonna be, it's not going to be like people pretending to sing. I know. There's just something... What is it about singing? What is it about breaking into song? What, what is, is it about it happiness sunny? that you, you don't like? I love, I, we're going to talk about it highs and lows. I love the Always Sunny musical because they made fun of it, right? Like, why are we singing right now? Like, that is... Well, Simpsons did that, I too. I think it'll yeah. be tongue-in-cheek. I mean, you know, they're smart. And they haven't decided if they're doing original songs or covers yet. And there may be a mix. You know, we don't know. Right. So there's still, there's still a lot to figure out, but... I just... Uh, there's something about, like, The Flash being like... <laughs> I run fast, yeah, I run fast, chick -a -chick, uh, run fast, and all my enemies are fast. If anyone can pull it off, it's going to be Grant, though. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be He's so, so ridiculous. Yes, yeah, I'm with Sinead on this yeah. one. <laughs> I'm still I'm so in, in a good way? Or? Yeah, in a good okay. way. Like, it's, it's a mus any musical is supposed to be a little bit ridiculous, but it's yeah. going to be so ridiculous. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not saying that I'm going to hate it, and I'm not saying I'm going to love it. I'm so on the fence right now, but... I I will say, and people have people yelled at us a bunch, and when we t talked about this a while back, remember Joss Whedon's musical episodes of some of the shows he's done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they were always very good. And sure, if it's just the one, <laughs> sure, it's gonna be two sure. episodes. I just you know like, I we'll see. I I would love if they took it in a farcical way, I'd be on board with that. But if they like try and make it serious, like. Life is so tough when you're Kryptonian. Like well, they I say, don't. you know, this is gonna be a pivotal moment, so you know the Flash yeah. is gonna end in tears. Yes. It's gonna yeah. for all of us. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. be real. Okay. But you know, all it's right. gonna be good. Sinead? In the most anticlimactic news all week, John Constantine is back on the CW. But instead of bringing Matt Ryan back in live action form, he'll be on the CW seed in animated form. So Constantine is sort of back, but not really in the form that we all want. David, is this a baby step to getting him back on the air? I think it's a step. I'm not sure how big or small the step it is. <laughs> is it a baby or adult size step? <laughs> baby step on the bus. Baby step off. The bus. Um, but I'm happy for Matt Ryan. I'm happy for fans of Constantine. I, I enjoyed Constantine. I, I wasn't one that I, I, I loved. It. You know, it wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sad when it went away. But I know there was a lot of fans out there that were excited. Uh, they were hoping it was going to come back after he was in the Arrow episode last I thought season. His episode yeah. of Arrow last year might he was have been very the best good. Episode of Arrow. I think he's, he's so a great, great Constantine. And yeah. he, he yeah. makes sense appearing not so much on Arrow because the magic stuff like causes complications in that world, but like mm -hmm. on Legends, sort yeah. of how Vixen has, has gotten on Legends, it could make sense, but the producer said yesterday that there are no current plans to have the live action um, come back on the CW shows, but as far as Constantine goes, but you know, it's a step, CWC, we'll see. And we do know that CW has said that they are developing some 
type of new superhero show, or at least based in that world. So we don't know they what are. that is yet. So yeah, I can't no wait to, details at yeah, all. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what that is. Yeah, I, uh, I love Constantine, and I would love to see him be that that fifth show mm -hmm. that friday mm -hmm. cw show i've said it when we were talking about it last week on twitter questions what if it's too much like supernatural it's a little i know, I know he's oh, different yeah. he's different but this is because those guys are always battling demons and angels and you know all this kind of thing i wonder if it's just too close to supernatural you might be right and i, I mean wonder. i've always been a fan of vixen i would love to see her get mm -hmm. her own yeah. kind of show so um i don't I, you know I, I, the seat is fine if it means more constantine because mm -hmm. i love that show when it was mb was it nbc NBC, yeah. NBC, and, and at least yeah. we have Vixen on Legends of Tomorrow. It's, it's, it's a know. different Vixen than who did the voice for the cartoon. But yeah, yeah so, and the, yeah. the animated Constantine will also be five or six episodes right. of like 10 minutes each. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Small doses. Uh, let's break down this most recent episode of Sherlock. Thanks uh, for, you know, superhero rundown, guys. But let's break down this Sherlock, first of all. Uh, spoiler I'm, alert. Uh, spoiler, yeah, let's throw it up there. <laughs> Because we're going to, I mean, there's only three total episodes. Yeah. So next week's the finale. Uh, I guess a little teaser for next week's episode. Because it is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, we are off here in the studios. But we are pre-taping an episode on Thursday, which means we're going to talk about FX's Taboo with Tom Hardy, which I'm so excited to watch. And then we're going to do some news, but we're going to take a ton of Twitter questions. So mm -hmm. hashtag a Clatter TV talk. We're gonna, we've been talking about doing an all Twitter question episode. I have a bunch backlogged already, so send some more in. But we will do, you know, as many Twitter, Twitter questions as we can get through on the show. Uh, we love all your guys' questions, so thank you so much for sending in. But let's break down this most recent episode of Sherlock. I want to start with the, uh, before the show kind of broke my heart a little bit, Allison Keene said she did not like this episode. No. Let's start no. with Allison. No. So, you know, I love Sherlock, and I was willing to give it a chance when, in the first episode of this season, right? Like, was some things I didn't love, but, um, yeah, we have the spoiler up there. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can speak freely. But basically, it's just they are manipulating Watson in such a, I mean, it's like nothing. You know what I thought of? I have a Westworld theory of Sherlock now. Um, because <laughs> Please don't bring up that show. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it was like everything that Watson does, he thinks are his own choices, right? He's like a Westworld host. Nothing is his own. It's all constructed by Sherlock. Sherlock is like Ford in this situation. Everything that Watson thinks or does or tries to do is all something that Sherlock has predestined for him mm -hmm. or his, his wife from beyond has controlled or he's being manipulated by super spoiler the third Holmes sibling right and it Shernasty, was nasty what's her name Shernala no like her, she it's an s I what saw it in the name? thing oh I don't know uh you saw it on a piece of paper Ugh, well, I don't know maybe it was like nasty Holmes so <laughs> a pet. oh no no it's it's a uh, she said it at the end it's a Greek name also or so Al Alsa. I, don't remember. I was so busy Alsa. seething with rage. Oh, was there? Yeah. So, that it was yeah. like, it, 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 I mean, so this poor guy. So, anyway, mm -hmm. all that aside, and also the fact that, like, she comes in as someone who's been played a part of like multiple women in John's life, right? He, who he doesn't recognize, which I think is like the perfect metaphor for how Moffat writes his women as like indistinguishable on the show. Like they're just, they mm -hmm. come and go. They all are in service of Sherlock. No one has their own thing going on. It's all about him all the time, which I love him. Benedict Cumberbatch is amazing, but I just feel like it's, it's been really disappointing and frustrating for me this season. Yeah. I, the, the fact that the big reveal was that she was the, you know, that whole, there, there was so much of this that was almost fear and loathing Las Vegas style that was really confusing me. I was like, is he on drugs? What's on drugs? What's not on drugs? It's, it, it got to be a little, uh, Confu not confusing, just like a lot. Yeah. Commotion-y. You know when you're playing like a video game and there's everything coming at you at once? Like that's what the Sensory overload. overload. But I think Sensory that's the point. Yeah. I think they're trying to put you into Sherlock's mind. So when he's has his sister there, he doesn't know that's his sister. And he's he's like, wait, why was looking out the window? Wait, I gotta. My brain works really fast. I have to catch up. And he's drawing right. things. And he's kind of you know using the eraser and you know pushing it away. I think we're in his head, mm -hmm. which is chaotic. And I don't think unless you're as smart as Sherlock, which of course we all aren't. You know, you, we can't process. I think that's part of it. I, I, I hear what you're saying. It probably didn't work maybe for some people, but I think we we're supposed to be inside Sherlock's mind. I like that visual style. Though. I mean, that's one <clears> thing <throat> I think Sherlock always does really well is that it has that really unique visual mm -hmm. tone, right? And you get yeah. to see things on screen that other shows don't show you. And, um, you know, and, and stuff like that, I think it does great. But then, and there were still some things I liked about it. You know, the sign, the, the, him going through the streets, right? And like writing his Fuck little off, yeah, F you, yeah, to his brother and everything. But yeah, I just felt like, Everything is an emotional manipulation at this point, and I, I don't know. 
It's not working for me. And no, interesting. There is a. I haven't read all the stories. But I know there is a story called the Dying Detective. Right. Um, this is the Lying Detective. Of course, there is a part where he is dying at one point. But I thought Toby Jones did a great job too. I was actually kind of sad Even that he was just teeth. a one-off See, villain. I feel like he, he was totally underused, right? Because yeah, they could have used him for another episode. It could have been like too. like a Luther three episode arc with him. Yeah, because yeah. I I realized in the episode I was like, okay, so he's supposed to be a serial killer. Like I'm still not totally sure like what like the crime itself was so underplayed in that mm -hmm. episode that you know and that's why I love Sherlock is like I love the relationship between Sherlock and Watson I love them just solving crimes together and I feel like that's the only thing we haven't gotten this yeah, season I'm kinda is, with you on well, that. I you think know? this feels like this might be the end I don't think they haven't confirmed. They could definitely. I'm sure the show would get renewed in a second. It's not a tr not a question of ratings, but these guys' schedules they are right. so busy. Yeah. So it feels like they're almost building this up to be like maybe the next episode will be the last one. Who knows? Maybe we'll get another one, but I feel like this could be the They've last. They've talked one. about another season. Yeah, definitely this. for yeah, sure. Definitely. But yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, like you said, it's always on the it's table. Always up in the air. Yeah. The act. I mean, the cast is amazing, but the story. Like, we could they go. Could we really... could go without. Like we could go without Sherlock for two more years. At least. You know I mean? yeah. 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 Also, too, like really quick side thing. I loved how when Sherlock was walking with his sister in the street, how we couldn't see her. Yes. Now, was that him doing that, or was that her? Was she hiding herself? Was she positioned in the exact area where the I cameras so. weren't, or was that Sherlock doing that? I think that's her. I thought that her, was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, a typical that's home, sort of, yeah. you know, yeah. that family is mm -hmm. tricky. They're crazy, yeah. Tricky yeah. group. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sherlock, well, I, like I said, next week, uh, our Monday episode will be on Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. It's a pre-tape, so we're taking Twitter questions. We won't be able to talk about the Sherlock season finale, so we'll have to wait until the following, which will almost be old news, but we will still talk about the finale of Sherlock. So You can read my recap and on Collider.com. Yeah, there you yes. go. <laughs> Allison Keen, at Keen TV, crushing it on Collider.com. Thank you so much for being here. Speaking of, Thank you. let's go into highs and lows. Uh, and we're going to start with you, Allison. Talk about TCAs. Yeah, let's, what are you looking forward to? Have you guys talked about TCAs on here before? I don't know if that's something most people are familiar we, with. We have. It's yeah. been like, we've covered it in like news stories, especially like highlighting some of the What's stuff. What's getting that's, renewed. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so basically it's it's a conference for TV critics. Um, they do a press tour twice a year um, in Pasadena and Beverly Hills. And it's a chance for, I'm from Atlanta, so... I mean, I think we've established that with all the <laughs> repping yeah, of Atlanta yeah. on this show, yeah. but um, it allows you know journalists from all over the country to get that access to the producers and the stars of these shows that we might not normally. And um, every day, a different network kind of does their song and dance of why we should pay attention to their like shows. A musical crossover, if you will. <laughs> that would be amazing, uh, actually, yeah. if they did that. Producers um, dancing. But, oh, actually, that might be terrible <laughs> in so many ways. But, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, you know, so we get uh, to see what's coming up. We get to talk to people about what's on currently. And um, what I'm looking forward to this week is FX. Their lineup, their panels are on Thursday. We've got, I mean, Legion, The American, Snowfall, Fargo, like just everything is going to be so good. And also the FX president, John Landgraf, is like – TCA royalty at this point. Everybody's Everyone the loves best. him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he. I mean, not only is he just so like open and and willing to talk about whatever, but he also gives us a lot of data about peak TV. And I love me some numbers. Awesome. And he, mm -hmm. you know, there are over 500 shows premiering next year. Is something I learned. So I uh, think last year he said there were like 400. 400 he said this year, yeah, it's even yeah. more. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. That's so, a yeah. lot of TV. <laughs> there goes my life. <laughs> uh, well, I'm look. Well, you, and you can check out. You're going to do all kinds of articles on Collider.com. Yeah, what definitely check out the site. Um, CW had their day on Sunday, so we've had a bunch of coverage from that. Some of which we talked about today. Yeah. Um, CBS and Showtime was today, and um, yeah, FX, Fox, ABC, everything is coming up. So awesome. definitely check out the site. Okay, let's break these down quick. Let's get some Twitter questions. We only have like seven minutes to go, so let's right, do cool. these. Um, the premiere of It's Always Sunny. Like we said, musical episode. I love this show. Yeah, it was great. Do you watch it? I do, but you know what? I haven't caught up with it oh, this man. season. The, I know. The but this was so funny. You didn't see it either. But I don't watch it. Yeah. Oh, man, amazing. It's good. You it's saw good. it, though, I did. Yeah, you don't good. even have to watch the rest of the show to appreciate it. Just watch the music. Yeah, you can watch it. Yeah, okay. it's super funny. Uh, you started the 100, Josh. I did. Uh, on David's behest. Uh, it's I my favorite started, show on the CW. Yep, I've started the 100. I'm, I'm a it's bunch a brutal of show. In. It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> You're okay. in for a time. All right. Well, mm. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> thumbs up so far. Hi. It just separates itself. You know the CW shows you watch? It's like, so it's like, Let's have a conversation. Yeah. The piano starts playing. There's none of that in the hundred. Yeah. They're it's just rough. killing people. It's killing people. Yeah, it's right. rough. <laughs> everybody, everybody is super good looking. Holy but, moly. But, but but they're dirty. They have dirt on the face. Yeah, so a lot okay. of dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sinead. Uh, David can finally sleep because Josh caught up on Vikings. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we need. I need to like. I need to talk about Vikings, and I haven't been able to talk about it because Josh has been behind. I haven't been able to sleep at night. I'm struggling, people. I'm so struggling. next week, now that we we can't talk about Sherlock, we're talking about Taboo. David and I are gonna take a full five minutes and uh, talk about uh, what's happening with Vikings. I know we don't have enough time right now to talk about it, but we will again next week. Our pre-tape episode, we're gonna talk about Vikings. Uh. Sinead. 
The CW is developing a charm prequel from the Jane the Virgin director. I don't know. I mean, Charmed greater. like Some people want right now. They want Charmed? Is that what yeah, they want? Sure. Like, what? It's a show's like 15 years gone. I and know. I saw those breakdowns, though. Like, and it's crazy because it's like really happening. Yeah. Wow. yeah I was yeah. like, whoa, this is a thing. <laughs> it's, really it's, yeah. it's a thing. thing. That's they sort of the best casting, way to describe it. Yeah. They're casting this. It's happening. It's right, a thing. Next? Um, Conan is possibly moving to a weekly format. I, Interesting. Like a John Oliver kind of? Well, yeah. It's, well, no, because it, it's or basically going to be like, uh, because he does those awesome remotes and he does a lot of cool bits and everything, that they're going to let him go more than that because there's so many talk shows out there, but Conan has really separated himself as being the one. Yeah, James Corden has car car carpool karaoke, Fallon has his thing, Kimmel has his thing, but Conan hasn't really come out except for those remotes. Yeah. So his daily show is kind of losing the steam, but his remotes are blowing up. So like, well, let's do more of the remotes, make it a weekly show. Mm. It's pretty awesome. Makes yeah. sense. Agreed. Uh, Santa Clarita Diet is about cannibals? Yeah. I'm now interested in this show. Mm -hmm. No idea what it was about before. Right. Like, I just, you know, Drew Barrymore, Timothy Oliphant. I mean, they're great, but there's so many did things. Did we know that? No. We did not. Mm -hmm. No. They, and I don't think they want to reveal it, but because no one was interested in the show, they're like, BT dubs. <laughs> yeah. It's about people. cannibals. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. It's pretty funny looking. Oh, that's funny. Hi. All right. Man Seeking Woman premiere. Allison, that's Love all you. Love it. I love it. I mean, it's such a great show. It's we really underrated. Show, huh? oh, you guys need to get on it. And I yeah. keep hearing. I, I like Jay Barishaw. He's, he's it's so good. It's it's super surreal. It's very like, it takes very cliche dating scenarios and blows them up into these crazy things. I mean, in the first episode of the series, he goes on a date with a troll, like an actual little troll, and she like bites him and kicks oh, him, no. and everyone's like, he's like trying to push her off. Everyone's like, why are you being so mean? Like, what's wrong with you? And he's like, what's wrong? With you? It's sort of Twilight Zoney yeah. in a way. I love it. It's great. That's it's great. great. Watch <laughs> that show. All right. Um, one of our fans wanted to mention Psych, but does anybody watch Psych? No, I That's don't. so long. I've heard good things. Yeah, but I, yeah right? No. It's like people talk about it all the time there's online. Your, there's your Psych mention. I don't know. I, apparently, it's one of those shows that people watch. Never really got to me. It's because it's on the same show. It's on the same network. It's on USA. Yeah. Oh. So it's it's you know it's like hot people in suits. So sunglasses and smiles. Mr. Robot. Sunglasses and, and smiles. <laughs> USA <Mr>. Robot. <laughs> all right. What's next, Sinead? Uh, Leah Remini's Scientology: The Aftermath. Man, this that that mm. documentary blew my mind. Yeah. It's really again the whole Travolta Scientology everything. It, it's creepy that we live so close to it. it really is. Did you we, watch Going Clear? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Going yeah. Clear is very yeah, good. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, for sure. Hi. Keep doing it, Leah Remini. You deserve. Uh, at least an Emmy nod for documentary yeah, series, awesome. for sure. David Blaine, Beyond Magic. I don't know. I think this was a Sasha one. Sure, it was good. David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> David Blaine. I watched, Sasha. Some, I watched some special he did at the beginning, like, a couple months ago, right? It's it's, maybe it's the same thing, but he keeps I know. Doing he's him. not, like, the thing about David Blaine that gets me is, like, he's an illusionist, too, so he will, like, say, you know, think of an animal, and the person will think of an animal, and then he'll spit that animal out of his mouth, like he spits these frogs out of his mouth, mm -hmm. but he has trained himself to, like, swallow animals. Like, yeah. it's not magic. It's, no, like, it's just creepy. weird. It's just yeah. weird things that he's learned to do. Yes. So, Quick note, know. traveling, if you're in Los Angeles, try to get invited to the Magic Castle. It might be the greatest place you ever go to. It's, yeah. like, little magic shows. It's this old house in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a castle. And they don't spit out castle. frogs at you. No, no, no <laughs> frogs. No frogs. Um, the Luther sketch in The Daily Show. That was really good. Fine. Yeah. The, the Daily Show, again, is something that may should maybe go weekly, even though it's called The Daily Show. Yeah. I feel like we're losing a lot of steam on the, those shows when we lost John Stewart and we lost Stephen Colbert. If yeah. you went, I mean, if you went to a weekly show, because last week tonight changed the game, right. and now a lot of people are like, whoa, shit, should we It needs to do? reboot in some way. Correct. Mm. You're right. I think that makes sense. You're right. Um, Nashville on CMT. I, I think it's always been the right place to put it. I, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it brought in, like, the highest numbers on CMT out of the last five years, wow. I think. I mean, yeah. of course. So it's, yeah. it's, it's where it belongs, and, yeah. you know. Congrats. I think it'll keep going. My buddy Brian works on the show. Congrats, mm -hmm. too. Uh, all right. Star, episode two. Finally watched Star. Oh, you watched it? Okay. Yeah. I know Sasha really I haven't, it. but it's about a girl with curly blonde hair. It sure is. So I want to watch <laughs> yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I watched the first season of Empire, and I was re very met on it, and I knew where it was going to go. Same as Power. I know I, I was, you always tell me to get back into Power, mm, but I could kind of see where it went. Uh, I think Star has a little more panache than those shows. There's a little more heart to it. Than, than Empire, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm digging Star. I've always, I know this sounds so lame, but I've always been a fan of, of girl groups, so whether it was Destiny's Child or even Fifth Harmony right now, give me a TLC, give me a salt and Pepper, any of those groups, I love that music. And give but me a show about it. you don't it. like musicals. You won't, you won't accept the Flash Supergirl musical crossover, no, I, but you I will watch Star. Yeah. Yeah, because it's more of like they're he like cover like the tunes. real life singing. Yeah, you have I like to okay. sing still and singing. You can't be like walking at the grocery store. Yeah, it also can't be singing. like okay. the songs that drive the plot. Okay, right. All right. You know, th like the ending montage of every episode of Sons of Anarchy was a song. But yeah, a full track. Yeah, a full track of a five-minute song. A lot of humping.
You know, a lot of, of Jax's sons, back. Sons of Anarchy. But Star, yeah, fake I'm, tattoo. I'm with it. All right, Sinead. I can combine these last two, Sinead. Yeah. All right, so the two-part Star Wars Rebels gets the show back on track, and the new trailer shows Obi-Wan and Darth Maul confrontation. Yeah, Star Wars Rebels is looking really good right now. They just released their mid-season trailer, I guess you want to call it, and it shows, well, well, it's not a spoiler, I guess, but the show, you see Obi-Wan, you see Darth Maul, so something's going down. Yeah. Something's going to happen, so I'm excited for that. Boom, Star Wars yeah. Rebels. And you guys, uh, when's the premiere? It already happened. Oh, it did. So, yeah. you guys are mm -hmm. so we're already going. Yeah, we already back. had the. It was a uh, Ghosts of Geonosis was the episode. It was a two parter, so it was an hour long. It was very good. Make sure you check that out on Disney XD. Awesome. Yes. Okay, let's do two Twitter questions here again next week for the fifth time. Next week we're doing a bunch of Twitter questions, <laughs> so send them in. You guys <laughs> you are just welcome. Keep saying that. Promoting that Twitter episode. <laughs> All right, Carter Parnell says, "Have any of you made an award acceptance speech?" Yeah, I mean like whether it was like a high school award or like a college, like a sports award, but never you gave like speeches a, for that though. Like, like I feel you like you just accept it and then you just walk off. Like you just like on some of the bigger awards, you like accept it. And what what big something. awards have you won? I want to know now. Uh, I mean, I life won, like, of Josh McCoogan. Yeah. <laughs> I, won, I won like a couple big awards for sports in high school and a couple big awards for a couple like philanthropy things in college. And you did cool. a speech. Cause yeah, I feel like, like in, in school, like, if I won an award, you go up and they hand it to you. Everyone's yeah. clapping and then you Everyone just walk away. You smile and you walk away. Yeah. I wrote speeches Wait, for maybe, maybe certain things, but not for acceptance speeches. I mean, I was yeah. I was the president of interfraternity council at Whoa. Central Michigan, so I had to do I had to present hey. speeches, but not I not like an winner. award. Yeah. Yeah, I've given speeches, okay. but not for. But I'm not, wondering yeah. if like you weren't supposed to give a speech and you just I did. Just did. Yeah. yeah. I think you just grabbed I, the I mic and just like, went with it. What's up? Yeah. It's like at the end of Mean Girls, and he's like, "You really don't have to make a speech." Did you make yours political like Meryl Streep last night? I did like that. Meryl Streep's speech, though. I did. Uh, all right, one more. Brian Yetman says, this kind of has to do with TV, but what are some of your favorite commercials? I think, did we talk about this recently? I put this in here because I still want to talk about that, um, the Marco Polo commercial with the llama. When it's oh, the yeah. Geico commercial. It's, it's, it's Marco Geico Polo. Geico always Marco has Polo. solid <laughs> yeah. commercials. Yeah. Yes. Uh, like, <laughs> Avant-garde, weird. Yeah. I love the um, State Farm commercials. Those are always really good. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking about commercials, the thing that's really grinding my gears at the moment is the damn Sprint guy. Can he just give oh, up? Right. Why are people still hiring <laughs> him? Yeah. It's annoying. It's a great no one back. cares. And basically all he's saying is like, we are just slightly worse, but it's only a 1% difference. So yeah. just come with us, even though it's worse than your current provider. No, 100%. It's like, what? Like, it's so badly written. And if it would, if it was, like, way closer together, I think people would care more. But it's been, like, 10 years since anyone's seen your face because your contract with T-Mobile <laughs> had to run out first. Yeah, it was a no-compete. Exactly. Uh, it was so Verizon. dumb. Can't hear me now. So stupid. I don't think it works at all. And I don't want to see him on my freaking TV anymore. But he has, like, 17 commercials. He's doing well. You know what my favorite one is? Is the one that, I think it's, like, a... a, a helpline for people with addiction but they got the most no no it's, really, it's the it's the, really dark, the dude though. has like no charisma at all he's like is it the Are seven you? step program? Oh, yes, the doctor. He's got the, the step. He's got it's, the, it's so yeah. evil. He's, he's not a actor. doctor. Like, like, the guy's not have, a doctor. Do you yeah. have a problem with, <laughs> with an addiction? Please is, call it, is it the guy who designed the It's not the, high the definition, seven, so like the, like the, the two black step, bars. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. when was like, this made? Yeah, it's brutal. That guy. I, I would say a couple Super Bowls ago, the Volkswagen commercial with a kid dressed as Darth Vader, and he goes out. He's trying to like start everything up, and nothing happens, and his dad drives home, and he runs out there, and his dad hits the automatic start, and the kid just lurches, jumps back, and I love that. Yeah, or the Doritos one where the guy is moving the Dorito and she's having the sonogram and then he moves it out too <laughs> yeah. far and she's like ah, yeah. that's a good one too. Yeah, you know, there have been good. some good like cry worthy ones too. Yeah. Like Subaru has a couple and then also there's a southern grocery chain called Publix where the mm -hmm. DA from Rectify is actually in oh. one of them and these things always make me cry. Or like, like it's um, just... the animal hospital and they're like for seven cents a day. No I can't yeah. watch those. No. Those, like, those I no. Yeah. No. No thanks. <laughs> Not the I'd rather watch Lynn. that dude with the beard be like call this number. <laughs> Do you have addictions? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, we'll <laughs> All right, uh, let's go there are so to. so many great commercials. I know. Let's go to everybody's favorite part of the show. Our guest, Allison Keynes. Back of the week. All right, it is Justified. Yes. Which is a show that you know I don't have. I watch so much television. I review so many different things. I don't have time to rewatch anything. But. I am rewatching Justified right now Whoa. with some friends who haven't seen it, and it holds up so well. It's one of the the best, just most well-written shows that's ever been on TV, and it really never got its due. Mm. Um, it aired on F never FX. Never nominated for much. No, and you know, which 
doesn't really mean anything because sure. now there was the wire and yeah. so many other things but you know you can find it on amazon prime streaming now and i just you know with the series finale still fresh in my mind watching the pilot again how much it calls back to that like it's such a smart show it's a modern western if you aren't familiar with it, it stars timothy oliphant walton goggins i was gonna say what the show did give us was walton goggins and you know he was only supposed to be on there for one episode mm -hmm. and he was so good that he's on it for a lot more than oh, that, yeah. and that's a wonderful He's thing. He's so good in that Watch show. it, watch it. Great pick of the week, thank Allison you. Keen. Yeah, uh, first of all, I think everybody in TV Talk Land wants to say thank you for being here. You're yeah. Thank you all yeah. so much for having yeah. me. It's so much fun. Next time you're in town, fresh off the boat from Atlanta, yeah. you want to stop in, we'd love to Polar have Arc you. Season 3, Episode 1 review. That's right. Oh, here we go. I feel like Anglophile crew yes. is going so like, no to take over. no one else to talk to about and it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all laugh at me when I bring up my British show. But Allison Keen always backs us up. She loves Rectify. Yes, 100%. You know I had to name drop it since I was here. I mean, of course, of course. So it breaks your heart. Uh, okay, that'll do it for us here on TV Talk. Before we get out of here, Sinead DeFreeze, where can the good people find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFreeze, and that's so Sinead.com here on Mondays hosting TV Talk, on Fridays hosting Movie Talk, and hanging out on Mailbag over the weekends. Allison Keene. You know what? I don't think I found my camera the whole time. Is that... <laughs> I'm doing, so, I'm trying so hard, guys. Um, yes, oh, okay, great. Hi. Um, so, yeah, you can find me on collider.com slash TV uh, and also on Twitter at Keen TV. There you go. David Griffin. On Twitter and Instagram at GriffinDE, as well as every Saturday with Christian Harloff, Ken Knapsack, and myself talking about Star Wars Rebels. Be sure to check out those reviews. Star Wars Rebels. And I'm at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube every Monday here on Collider TV Talk. As always, guys, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.